Hey guys, Mr. Wemp here. Today um, we're going to talk about isometric sketching. We're actually going to be doing a, a video series that's uh, a couple of different sketching types, isometric, oblique, um, uh, pictorial, and, and then also multi-view. So let's uh, take a look at isometric sketching today. And I've got it written out here. And there's some, uh, some notes that you need to have for isometric sketching and, and pictorials. And basically... Uh, what you need to know is that uh, an, in an isometric pictorial, it means equal measure. Okay, so in your notes, you probably want to write this whole screen down. Um, we have three adjacent faces on a cube that will share a single point. So what that means is this face right here and this face are adjacent to each other because they're touching. And then this face is also adjacent because it's touching all three. And they both are sharing this point right here. Okay, so the way to properly draw an isometric pictorial is that you need to have these guys at 120 degrees from each other. So if I look at this line right here, uh, let me change to a different color here. Um, let's see. Oops, I'm in the wrong area. Let's do, uh, let's do red. So if I'm in this area right here, basically this little arc is 120 degrees. Same with this one and same with this one. So what you get is a basic Y shape. And generally speaking, in your um, on your grid paper, it looks something like this. A lot of people tend to try to just go here and here, but you really need to go over one and up two to make that a good 120 degrees, at least in your, um, or excuse me, over two, or yeah, over one and up two. So over one and up two. So basically you have here and then right here. And this will give you a pretty decent 120 degree uh, Y. So we always start with the Y. You know, just give us that Y shape. And then we can draw it out. So what this would look like if you were to be drawing on your grid paper would look something like this. I'd go ahead and, and uh, if I'm just going to draw, uh, let's draw, let's draw this cube right here. And so if I'm going to draw this and I'm in my notebook and I want it to look real nice, um, I'm going to start with my, my center point, and that's going to be this guy, and I'm going to make that Y. And so basically, um, it goes over 2 and up 1, it goes over 2 and up 1, and then straight down. That's going to give us a nice starting point for our cube. Okay, And I'm doing this in a, in a lighter, kind of a blue color, because... What I'm trying to do here is just create some construction lines that we saw earlier. So those those are pretty light, and then I would definitely come back in after the fact, and I'd darken these in, and you know make these nice dark lines right here. Now it's a little bit shaky on mine because I'm drawing it on the computer, but you kind of get the idea. Okay. So even though you're on grid paper, you don't have to necessarily follow that grid a whole lot. The idea here is that our block is fairly proportional. So We keep this proportional so everything stays nice and neat. Okay, so basically, if we go back to our slide here, we see that we have equal measure. All the points converge in one spot. Okay, the three edges represent the height, width, and depth. So the height is right here. So if I'm looking at an object, I want to know how tall is it. The depth is how deep it is, and that's going to be measured in that direction. And the width is basically how wide is this thing from one side to the other. So we have height, width, and depth. And if I'm looking at something like maybe a, a nice L-shaped block here, you know, and it goes back, does something like this. This is actually an oblique drawing. Uh, this right here is my width. This right here is my height. And then this is my depth, OK? This is how you would look at it. These are two different blocks, each facing in different directions. And you notice that the front is here. So we always do the front facing this way in this class. Okay, So we always have the front. We always have the top, up at the top, obviously. And then we show, you usually will show the right side. Okay, So that kind of depends on how you're looking at it. And later on, when we do multi-view. This will make more sense. Okay, so how do we choose which view we're going to show? First of all, we want the most natural position. So 
um, looking back at this guy, it probably would look best for us in this position here. This block will actually work both ways, but you see we have features here, and so it makes sense to show the best shape and, and characters on here. So we're going to still use uh, this one. So use this. They're both okay to use, it's just that this one right here is a better view. Uh, we like to have the longest dimensions to be the front view, so again, the longest dimensions here, that's our tallest dimension or our longest dimension, so we're going to make that one our front. We have the fewest hidden lines. This guy doesn't have any hidden lines, but if it had, uh, if it had a block here, that would be awesome, but if it had a block back here, we might want to choose the other side to be the front, maybe like on this view right here. Uh, so fewest hidden lines possible because we don't like those. And then the most stable and natural position. So in other words, I wouldn't do this one flipped upside down and, and teetering or anything like that. Okay, So that's how you choose where the front view is. And once you have the front view, you're pretty much sorted out and you can figure out where things go. All right. So basically, <clears throat> we have our, our best shape description. We don't have any hidden edges if we look at this block. See, if, if we looked at it from the other way, this line right here, that line right there would be a hidden line. Okay, we don't. It's hidden because it's still there, but we wouldn't be able to see it. So therefore, we followed those terms and determined that this is the best front view. So if this is the front, that means that this is the width, this is the height, and this is the depth right there. Okay. Um, to draw your isometric drawings, let's do. Let's actually draw this guy right here. So we're going to draw this, and if you'll notice, the first thing, this whole thing kind of fits into kind of an imaginary block. All right? So we've got this imaginary block there, and that's the first thing we're going to draw. So if we go back to our shape, we're going to draw out, let me get blue again for our construction lines. Uh, we're just going to draw out an imaginary block. And I like to just, you know, start with my Y shape, and we go out. And we draw up here. And as you get more comfortable with this, you'll be able to draw these much quicker. The first few times, you're probably going to have to struggle a little bit, but that's okay. Okay, so there's our basic block. And then we see on the front, uh, you just start building it from one side, and you just start building in this direction. Okay, so I'm going to work my way from the front all the way to the back of my part. So I see I have this kind of, this big L shape. So I'm going to go back to my drawing and I have basically this L shape and the thing with a isometric drawing is you want your lines to all be parallel so we'll keep all these lines parallel and if I pull up my drawing again so I've drawn this bit right here and right here now mine's not quite proportionate but we'll get it fairly close and I know that this line goes all the way back so I can go ahead and pull up my drawing here and draw this one that goes all the way back and then this one goes all the way. So we'll pull that one up. And we'll go all the way there. I know that these two are connected right there. Wait, is that right? Yes. So they're connected top to bottom. And then about halfway in, they do the same thing again. So about here, they do that again. And then I also know that this guy right here comes in and makes a corner right there and right there. And so basically, by starting with this box shape, I've come in and I've made a solid object in here. Whoops. I had a little bit of a scroll. And then I come in with my dark lines, and I'm going to fill in over the top of my construction lines so that I have these nice uh, heavy-duty object lines. And these are going to give me some definition to my part that I'm building here. Now, one thing I did want you to notice is that I am not erasing any of my lines. Okay, All of my lines are still there. I've just changed how heavy I've made them. Okay, So then the last thing I want to do is if I'm looking at this, um, we go back up to our drawing here, uh, cruise through the box. See, now notice the difference between these two drawings. This is good proportion. This is bad proportion. Okay, so it's very important to have proportion in your drawings. Okay, these are three different types. You can see the box method. Here's an example. You can see it go through. We did the same thing. Um, and then basically, after you're all finished, there's the con so there's construction lines. 
there are the object lines and then you can do your faces and then what you do is you do this thing called tonal shading and the shading really kind of gives life to your sketches and so we pretend the sun's out here and the rays are going this way so basically we would have a dark surface here and a less dark surface here okay and if I kind of speed through this one you can see on this drawing I've done tonal shading where you've got the darker areas and then lighter areas so if we go back to our original sketch here of our part here's the sun and its rays shining down on you so where are the darkest areas going to be? Darkest areas are going to be here on the opposite side of the sun. Okay, And then where the sun also doesn't shine is maybe on this side. But these are going to be lighter and not quite as dark. So I would fill these in a little heavier. And fill these in a little heavier. And maybe we'll get something, maybe we'll do a little smudge tool and see what. Let's do like kind of artsy and we'll smudge it all up. Make these a little lighter here and here. That didn't work as well as I want it to. So I'll just go back to the pen. And again, we'll fill this all back in nice and dark. And that should take care of our tonal shading for us. And this should be a completed part. This would be like something you could turn in. Okay, I expect to see the construction lines and everything else. Um, and then what's really important though, especially when you're free drawing, is to keep everything proportional. So this is very important. Okay, And then as a little side note, a lot of people tend to sketch, and you probably saw me, I'm trying to do big straight lines. It's a little bit messy, but that's okay. What a lot of people tend to do are these little tiny like little sketch lines to sketch something and these and you all know if you do it or not these are not what you want you want to be confident in your line so this is a big red no okay what I want you to do is even if it's messy and you'll know that my lines are messy but what I want you to do is to be confident in your lines so just draw them out throw them on there and if they're a little bit messy, that's okay. The idea here is that we keep everything proportional and try to keep your lines parallel so that everything looks nice and neat. Okay, so that's isometric sketching. Um, hopefully you got all the notes. If you have any questions, just let me know because this is going to be very important uh, for the rest of the year. All right, we'll see you in the next video.